Hey everybody, thank you guys for checking out this video. Um, today I'll be talking about my 5 lug conversion here. So this is what I'm going to be using on my notch back. I'm going to explain to you uh, why I chose these parts here and what they came out of. This is, uh, in my opinion, the best setup that is regularly available at the junkyard. With uh, regularly being the keyword here. Anyway, uh, I'm going to talk about the spindles first and then I'll get to the calipers. Um, so what you see here is a set of SN95 uh, uh, spindles. So in particular, these are going to be 94 through 95. So only for two years. Uh, GT or V6 are basically the same spindle. And let me explain to you why the year matters. If you turn this around and you see the spindle from the back, you'll notice that on 94 through 95, there's this drop here. Okay, so this is where your tie rod end goes. Um, so if you're using this on the Fox body and you want to maintain the close to regular geometry, you would want these here, uh, 96 and up. You'll notice that the spindle is very similar, but on this area here, uh, the bracket is just goes uh, straight. There's no drop, so so it's like straight, right, like this. So when you put the tie rod in, it ends up like at an angle like that, right? And I believe that's what causes a uh, bump steer and stuff like that when you when you use those spindles. All right, so let me talk about the caliper now. These here are uh, SN95 uh, New Edge calipers. All right, so when Ford redesigned the SN95 for uh, 99 through 04, they installed this setup here, which is an upgrade without having to change the entire system. Basically, they just changed the calipers, the brackets, and the brake pads, and the rest remain the same. Uh, any benefit uh, to the braking system is just from the caliper itself. Uh, when you look at this caliper, you'll notice the main difference between this and what was on the SN95 previously is uh, these here are made out of aluminum. Okay, so the body is made out of aluminum. Also, it's a dual piston caliper instead of the single pot that uh, the older models had. Alright, so when you look at the caliper, you'll realize that uh, since it's made out of aluminum, it'll be better at heat dissipation and that's the main focus on the redesign if you pay attention you see all these large fins here and that's the uh, same deal to radiate heat outwards all right when you turn it around you see also fins around the uh, area where the piston sits and that's to keep the brake fluid cool for it also went to the extent of using a phenolic piston all right so it's the material uh, usually calipers uh, use steel pistons but uh, this material here is uh, great for dissipating heat uh, if you've ever bought a uh, carburetor spacer or an intake spacer they're usually made out of this material because this is great it works as a heat barrier uh, and the purpose of using it in the pistons I believe was to keep the, the heat from the brake pads from transferring to the brake fluid. All right, Heat is the number one enemy of your braking system. So um, these can be basically bolted on to any 96 to 98 and it's a good it's a great upgrade. Uh, they can also be used on 94 to 95 but it's not a bolt-on upgrade because you'll run into an issue basically it's a clearance issue so up here you notice that the bracket will bolt on no problem but when you try to install the caliper uh, there will be contact in this area here all right I don't know if you can see that this is round and then there's a section that is like uh, squared where the casting was uh, broken off I believe so you basically need to grind material off of this section here and maybe a little bit of this section here but mostly up here all right so let me bolt on the bracket and show you guys what I'm talking about 
All right, so like I mentioned earlier, the bracket goes onto the spindle no problem. So what happens is when you install the caliper, let me put that on. All right, so when you put the caliper on and you try to bolt on, you realize that this bolt won't go through okay and the reason for that is the caliper is not sitting all the way down okay so I was hoping to possibly give you guys a, a better view of uh, the issue that I mentioned alright so let's see you can see that uh, this is how the spindle will sit in your car okay so this will be the bottom side where the ball joint goes and these are uh, where the strut bolts onto, right? So the bottom piece here, it actually seems to have enough clearance. I don't see it uh, touching the caliper itself, so there's no real problem there. Although I might end up uh, adding a little bit more clearance, but I mean, there's enough of a gap there for the caliper to slide. But up here, you can see there's a little edge where the caliper actually contacts the spindle All right hopefully you can see that so let me move this out of the way um, if you see the spindle is round and then there's that little uh, square section so my guess is that by grinding this away and making it round as the rest of the spindle we might be able to have enough clearance All right so we're gonna do that but uh, before I wanted to uh, be able to clean out this uh, parts and get as much gunk and stuff off of them as possible uh, to be able to rebuild uh, the calipers and hopefully Maybe I'll even paint them, or I might leave them as cast. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and clean them. Okay, so I cleaned off these parts best that I could. Uh, they're less grimy now. What I'm gonna do next is start grinding on the spindle to try to create uh, clearance for the caliper. Uh, I'm gonna do that by smoothing out this uh, square section here on the spindle. I'm gonna try to completely grind that off. Uh, this is the section that's going to require the most grinding and on this side I'm just going to uh, basically follow the shape of the spindle and grind off any casting marks and that should uh, create enough clearance for the caliper to move around going to require some patience of course
Okay, so I believe that's gonna do it. Just a little test fit. And yes, definitely the caliper bolts on now, but we have to check for clearance. Alright, let me show you guys. So, the caliper definitely is on, but there still appears to be just a minimal amount of clearance. So I'm going to have to touch it up just a little bit more. Alright. But uh, basically, that's what you have to do to clearance the, the spindle to fit these calipers on. Now I'm going to go ahead and start on the second one here. It's basically going to be the same process. So I'm going to have to basically ground this flat and just touch up this area here like we did in the first one I wanted to show you guys um, the difference between the spindle that I just modified and the one that's still untouched here on the right so you can see on this left one here I uh, reduced the area quite a bit you can see there's a big bulge here and that's where the caliper was making contact um, the majority of the grinding however happened up here you can see I rounded this off <clears throat> and I also reduced it this is what it looks like um, when it hasn't been touched so that's uh, basically the modifications you need to make in order to run the newer style PBR caliper on the 94 to 95 SN95 spindle. Alright, so <clears throat> what I'm going to do next is I'm going to perform the same modifications to the other side. And once that's done, I'm going to put the calipers back together with new seals. And that should be about ready. Alright, so let me get to this and I'll show you guys right now in a bit. Alright, so as you can see, I was able to install both calipers now and you can see there there's a good amount of clearance on that side and also it's kind of hard to see on that side and then this is the other spindle you can see there's a clearance there I'm not sure if it's that visible to you there it is and also sorry it's kind of hard to focus there it is you can sort of see it there all right so when you do this just make sure that you move the caliper around and that it doesn't bind up in any way or form check that there's always clearance because remember these are these are uh, sliding calipers so they slide back and forth all right, there's a, they're floating calipers. All right, same deal with this one. Make sure they don't bind or touch the spindle at any point. And basically, these are ready to go. All I have to do now is uh, finish uh, rebuilding these calipers. I'm gonna do that. Possibly throw a coat of paint on them, and then I'm gonna show you guys what all this stuff looks like when it's ready to go in the car. Alright guys, so as you can see, I'm pretty much done with this setup. Um, I have to admit, they do look pretty cool to me. I ended up touching up the calipers with a little bit of red paint and the brackets with a bit of uh, black paint that I had left over. Uh, I picked up these rotors here this morning from somebody on offer up selling them for about $40. I got a good deal on them and that completed my setup. Uh, I think these are going to make a world of difference on my notchback. And by the way, if you're interested in seeing me install them 
or if you like this type of content in general please consider checking out my other videos and subscribing to my channel um, again thank you guys for watching I hope uh, you like the video and happy new year's take care guys see you guys soon